So I'm looking now at the other ear and I'm going to put in just a white base. I'll just go around the edge first, not forgetting that little line there. slightly, not too much, and then gently round, and I've got a lovely white bit here, so I'm literally just looking at this, just measuring it, where that point there comes in comparison to that, and uh, there we could go, and then sure that's in the right place on there and then very good for that that's a little bit high and just correct it as you go along looks good it's a good habit to get into just take a bit of that off there see how the pastel clings to the pastel mat once you get it on there it's very very tricky to get off. So, although having said that, it will take a lot of pastel, and you can correct mistakes by going over them with other colours. Yeah, I'm using the pencil on the side now. Now these are all quite light here. These hairs, so I'm going to put those in. They're going up. See, the hair's going up, straight up, vertically, then they change about here. And then we've got a point there, that point there. And you know, you have to do your best, you're not always going to get it perfect, but um, just do your best with it. This is quite light. Put it in there for now. Just for now. Now this is going to be pink in here, but we're going to do it white first because um, I'm just going to make that clear that that's hair there, that bit there. because you've already done this this line here that's there that's there and then that goes down there and then this is this is grey back here but you're just going to do it white first anyway just pencil it in a little bit White just stops any intensification of the colour um, before it gets too bright. I mean, there are some really bright pink bits in there, but I won't do them that bright. It doesn't look quite right. Well, if you like it, whatever your print has come out like, you could 
just do it like that. helpful just to do straight lines then you can soften them up after. It's it's easy for getting the angles in. So we're gonna we're just gonna keep it very light this this bit here. This is the pinkest pink. So down here I've done for the ear white, which is one I want, and one nine one, which is what I've got in my hand now. And that's the colour there that's that's just come out. So it's, it's kind of similar. You probably never get it exact because we're don't forget we're working with very limited colours here, but you should be able to get any colour you want really. That's a bit pinky there. Go up to the edge there, I think. We can go over that. These little bits here, we'll go those little white hairs there, we'll go over there. Get them in. And there's a bit of yellow there too. But um yeah, we'll just keep the pink down here then. So we're just putting in the base, base colour here now for the ear, that's all. It's quite light in the top now, just blend it in. Just try and keep it off around the edge there. This is why a lot of people use blenders because if they've got big fingers, um, you know, they kind of, it's a bit, I suppose it's a bit more difficult, I don't know, it may not be. It's what you get used to, isn't it? It's what you get given, get used to. Right, it's a little bit darker here. So I'm going to go a bit heavier with the pink. I can't remember what this colour's called, but it's on the box. It's on your box. You've got the number, so you can you can check it. That's it. And you've got some like, like little pink lines going across there. 
don't need to put those in just yet, I don't think. We've, we've got, um, we'll get the air dry, I think. Because that is a bit creamy, yellowy there. This colour, this lemony colour, is fantastic colour to for going over the white. It's like a um, like a glazing, you know, with oil paints, you get like glazes, it goes over. It just changes the colour of the white. Very good. Very light. You don't need you don't need a lot of colour in there. See how it's changed that to a green. It's almost the same look. We're not bothering with the little hairs just yet. You can leave it sort of furry on the edge. That always looks like hairs. And then just put the few odd hairs in if you want to at the end. We'll do those at the end. Now, I want to make sure we get that little point in there. Very light. I'm not pressing hard. Not hardly touching the paper, really. You'll probably look at this and think, oh, she hasn't got the angle right. And you'll you'll be right as well, I'm sure. Because um, when you're doing it, it's all different. When you're just watching, it's a different thing entirely. Now this is quite light here, so I'm just going to go very, very gross. Teeny, teeny bit. That's not ideal, but okay. And when you've done something that's not ideal, when you go over it, you've got another chance to get it to get it right. It's slightly in there. I'm furrowing it with my finger. I always do that. It helps you, it really helps. And then out again, into that point. Just soften it up. It's a bit thick, but that's okay, because we're gonna use our, gonna use our pink now. We've got, we've got a line, we've got that pink line there. We're gonna get that in now. And that's just, just coming up with that little, that little point there we just put in. some very dark bits in there, but I'm going to put those in with dark grey, I think. And that line is coming around like that. I really like the idea of just using a few colours, actually. It's a bit like doing black and white pictures. It, it really forces you to get creative with what you're working with. It's all good. It's all good learning curve. You're learning about colour all the time. It's partly why, you know, not only to keep the cost down, but it's partly why I wanted to do this. So that you'd be learning about colour mixing, uh, which you do on the page, which is fantastic. That's one of the fantastic things about pastel. Now, I'm just looking at this. Make sure that line's right there. Uh, you know, you could, it, it is a block of colour, but we'll break that up a bit. Then there's another line coming from here. And then it comes out like that. And that's stronger in there. And that's coming through there. Got little flecks of it coming through here. So we're going to put some white in here. See this little patch here? A little bit of white there. And then there's streaks of whiter colours going into the pink. So we're going to have a go at doing that now.
careful when you go over it with your finger that you haven't got pink on it, like I just did. of the pinky white coming across there. And there's a very pink bit in here, which we're going to do with this pink because it's much more realistic actually than what's on here. And this, looking at this angle here, this pink line here. leave this these white hairs until we, we go back to it we'll glaze over the edge with the yellow that I just did here as well it looks very good might as well do that now I think so realistic because don't forget it's going into a lot a very dark area here so I'll, I'll put a little bit on here because I need it but we'll do that green we'll do a nice put a nice um we'll put the bright green over there that's it that's dark there I won't put it there And this, you see, this is looking a lot lighter than this. So just copy it. Just copy it. That's all you need to do. Just copy it exactly. As new as you can. Okay, so we've got some nice little thin hairs here. See, um, as you can see, I haven't really got a big point on there. Don't really need it very soft touch you can still get in those little tiny thin hairs mm. excuse me it's like a scone tank load of cream with it nice we had to have a scone we were too late for a proper lunch so sometimes you just have to buy the bullet don't you just think oh well I'll have to eat it then. <laughs> okay, so let's get these lines here going across here. Now, what I'm going to look at is this point here, where these lines are. It's just above that point there. We've got our point in there. These lines going across is just slightly above, and it's about that far away. That's how I work it out. Like that. So we've got the first line in, and then we've got another, like a patch of hairs coming like that. And then we've got some up, coming up there. Then we've got another one just here. Actually, it's very close to that one. We'll, 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 we'll actually do the patch there, and we'll use this one for going across. See, it's just coming past the top there, that little mark there. I won't go over the edge because we're not ready to do that yet. And then we've got some lines coming across here and some coming up here. We're still only up to this mark here. See, all the time looking at this, we're measuring against this little 
literally smell it this ear. And straight across there. Then the hair come down there, which looks nice. Then his hair's coming up here. And there's a black hair there, which I put in after. We'll get more definition with this when we get in with um, yellow and grey. Little patches of hairs going up there. And that's where you see those little tiny bits of pink in there. Like that's that little bit there. flowing. I won't go over the edge because I'm not ready for that yet. Oh, I just did. I'm sorry. But I try not to. See, when you go free flowing, it goes just much more natural looking. You don't do this. Oh, well, I don't anyway. Somewhere else might. Doesn't work for me. Just this works very well. have been done already. Use those. Don't waste them. Now you've got a nice pink, pinky bit there. Also you can dye some hairs going up there like that. Well I'll just show you something. This is why if you situate your picture right over like that, this is what I forgot to mention really. I may have mentioned it, I don't remember. Um, but you can try things out on the edge here, you see. This is where you're going to cut your picture. That will go under the mount, that will go under the mount. And then you'll cut it up here. But this half an inch here will go under the mount. This will have half an inch under the mount. But you can try out things here. So, say you wanted to think, oh, I think uh, I want to try something in the ear here. I want to see what colours I'm needing there for darkness. You can get that into place. I'm not going over this because I want to leave that. Get the, that colour into place. Give it a, a rub. See, it's a bit stronger there because I've got a bit more colour on, that's all. Because uh, I've got a bit more colour on here now. Um, and then try, um, let's say try with blue. It would be blue or grey. Because you're looking to make that really dark pink there. It will actually go dark mauvey colour. But it will have a nice intensity. And it won't be drab looking. You know, often when you use grey over white, it can be a bit drab. Um, especially when you want a bit of impact. looks quite good I think and these bits of pink in here are quite strong aren't they but as I say it doesn't matter if they don't come out exactly the same colour um, if you had 60 pencils you'd get exactly the same colour um, and it, it would be nice but it, it it's lovely to be able to do it with just a few I think Just looking at these lines that are going across that way. Okay, you can go over these as well. If they're too dark, you can actually just go over them. 
Now, here we've got a little line of quite deep pink. So I'm just going to put in these these little marks here. They won't be regular. They'll just be very regular marks. Try not to just dab them if you want them to stay put. Um, if you rub them, they'll just blend together. very um, kind of finished off thing, um, not really neat looking. Uh, what I used to use a lot were the, um, the colour shapers. I'm just looking for it now. Um, where is that? It should be here. Here it is. shaper very soft see very soft you have to make sure that you wipe them before you use them just wipe them on a bit of towel or because they do tend to cling the color tends to cling onto those but what you can do is if you want them really neat looking and, and a bit blended you do that like that but you can see it just it just softens them a bit uh, just like that if you want to so the more you do that the more it's going to blend it um, at this point, I'm not, I don't, I'm not keen to do it for my own picture, to blend it that way. So, right. Now, you see we've got some hairs coming across here that are hardly discernible. Just got to put those in pink so that it just gives that effect that those hairs are coming across here. Um, these blue to just take that intensity off a bit um, and here just dull them down a bit to keep them strong So yes, you can see bits of dark in there, but in a way, it gives you that flecky effect. Yes, it's lines, but it gives you the overall effect of there being little depth in there. And you haven't had to work at it. You haven't had to put all those lines in. So I'm using the colour of the paper for that, which is um, I'm very keen on doing. It saves a lot of work and it gives a nice effect. Um, other people, they may they may really want to do all that, but you know I've only got one life, so um, I don't want to. You know I want to be able to get through some pictures and not spend months. I've spent months on pictures, and um, it's love. You know it is great when you have when you've produced that picture and you think, mm, blimey, you know that's that looks pretty good. But so it should if you spent four months on it. Should look fantastic, shouldn't it? Um, especially if it's only that big. Um, so, I'm just lightening that up a bit. Again, you see I'm not colouring it all over, I'm just letting the pink come through and this is quite hairy this little bit here isn't it I'm, I'm looking at this now so it's going up here 
nice and airy, fluffy. Soften your easel now because I'm. This is I've always got used to holding this, but when you're um, videoing it, it it really doesn't help to be able to see what I'm doing if the thing is moving about. So I think I'm going to get another easel. It's a very good easel I've got here. I've been very lucky to have it, but um, it's it, as it's got older, it, it's it's taken to move. It's mobile. That's all I can say. It's a mobile easel. Right, that's that's too thick there. So let's go and cross it like that. And then we've got going in between those bluey pink lines there. Okay. Right, I'm just gonna leave that and see see how it looks tomorrow. That needs to be more yellow, I can see that straight away. Just looking at that there, see? It's too bright. This needs to be yellow. Yeah. And here, I'm gonna put that green in there. Got a nice green in the set here. And this is number 168. It's got quite a nice point on it actually, which is, is handy for what we want to do here. So yeah, I'm just going to go over it with the green. That's over the yellow, oh, yellow over white. So yeah, you see, there it is. That's the, that's the green. And it's going up into the yellow and it's going down here. Nice. And then we're going through over the edges a little bit. Put a bit more white on there. So yeah, there it is. It's not until you start drawing that you see all these colours. What I'm looking at now is there, there isn't too much of a line there, but there's a dark line there from the paper. I'm just filling that in because it's not really there in the picture. It is a bit more on that side. these lines in here now. Um, right, so let's let's get something to measure by. See this line comes down there. Mine's actually a bit too rounded there. I'll just sort of soft 
soften that up a bit and I'll put a bit of green over that. Um, that line, it looks like I've already put it in in black actually, but it's there and it's coming over to here. So yeah, I just draw it. I'm putting it in like that rather than going like that because it's, it's quite a definite place that and I think it'll be be good there. Holding it like that gives you a nice fine edge. Now you can see what's happening there. But that you think, oh yeah, that's white going down there, but it's not really white. It's it's hardly there really. So I'm just sort of putting a hint in there as a, as a base. Then you've got a line going across there to that line there. That just gives you, and that's all dark in there. That's the little bit that we left to do white. So that's going to be grey. This is going to have that. It's going to be separated there. So I've left it quite in there because it is dark so, so now we've got these these bits in we're going to go um oh, probably about it doesn't go too high in that actually it probably needs to come yeah it's coming up here just kind of there really that kind of there so we've got some straight ones there um a nice visca coming across there we don't need So get the key things in that you like and then yeah and then just put you know just put some individual hairs in from different directions uh, get some hairs going through there just on the very edge there Looking here, there's a curl that's going up here like that. I'm going to put that one in because that's nice. As many directions as you could get in because it's, it's got curly, curly hairs in his ear. There's one there, that coming down. Be enough. And the odd lighter one here. But they're not, not very bright, these. Very, very dull down. So keep our dark marks there. Although they're dark, it's dark in there, they do go across it. So don't blend it in. Um, got a little line in there. 
my screen colour there. Now a lot of people would have real issues with this, they'd want to make it the same either side but the whole idea of picking a really good picture is that you've got light, you always have one darker side, one darker green eye, one very bright green eye and uh, what gives it the reality is the fact that it's in a light, it's, it's real, it's being lit, it's not just like a flat picture and um, that's why I picked this picture because it'll get us a practice at everything here. You can do eyes, nose, mouth, ears, fur, short fur, longer fur, paws, arms, and a bit of fabric. It's fabric if thrown. So this is going to cover a lot of things for us. We'll get to do the whiskers. That's how you do whiskers like that. So, yeah. You've just got to be brave, brave enough to say, well, oh, actually, yeah, that is green. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it green. Um, there's a tendency to go a bit mad with whiskers. I think you can overdo it. Um, so when you've done a little bit, just leave it for a bit. Have a look at it tomorrow. I think we're probably coming near the end of our time now. I think I've done about half an hour. So, um, well, next time I carry on, I'm going to try and do some tomorrow. And I think the lessons are going to be longer than half an hour uh, because we've got so much to cover in this. But as you can replay the videos as much as you like, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't finish your picture in four weeks. I'd love you to finish it if you, if you would. Um, it just means you're going to have to put a bit more time into finishing it. But it depends how keen you are, really. Yeah, see how you go. It's not a test. It's up to you. It's just supposed to be fun, you know. I want you to enjoy doing it. And uh, you'll, gain, you'll gain lots of tips. Even if you don't end up drawing stuff like I do, in this way, you'll find your own ways that you like, which is the whole idea of it, really. It's to get you a feel for pastel and um, just get into it in your own way, really, and have fun doing it. Okay, I'm going to go now, so see you soon for the next episode.